Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Middleware Technologies. Today we will be looking at how we can integrate OpenSearch with LDAP for authentication and authorization services. So what is an LDAP server? LDAP server can be utilized for authentication and authorization services. So basically authentication means it accepts the user credentials and tries to validate it whether they are valid or not. And authorization is basically it tries to check whether a user is a particular uh, is a part of a particular group or role uh, which grants them a special privileges based on the type of role or group they are assigned to so that is the whole purpose of the ldap server which we are utilizing in our organization okay so as a first step like in order to integrate uh, ldap server with uh, open search we need to gather some details about the LDAP server. So I have a list of, uh, I have provided a table uh, which are the most important uh, information that we need to gather from an LDAP server. Okay. So as you can see, the first name is the host name, which is the LDAP server host name. And the port is where the exactly the LDAP server is listening. So if your LDAP server is listening on a secure port, it, it will be default to 636, otherwise it will be 389, uh, which is a non-secure port. Okay, but in my case, like it is 636, that is a secure port for LDAP server. Okay, SSL enabled is true because we are listening on a secure port. And the next important thing is bind DN and the bind password. Okay, so you need to have uh, system id with which you will be able to authenticate uh, with the ldap server okay so i have uh, the by dn and by the password as configured in this screenshot the next thing is user base it is basically where the users are present in your ldap tree okay in my case it is stack.com so uh, my users are based under the stack.com organization and the next thing is user attribute so basically every object uh, whichever is present uh, everything that is present in lab is an object and the user entries that are present are also objects and each object contains some set of attributes so in this case the user attribute that we are going to use is the AD ID or LDAP ID. Okay, so we are going to look for a user with their LDAP ID. So that is an attribute of a user object. The next, the next one is trusted CA cert. So basically, the LDAP server, as I said, is a secure server. So the secure server is configured with a uh, certificate, which is. Uh, provided by a CA signer certificate, uh, CA authority. Okay, so that is a CA signer certificate of the LDAP server. How we can get the CA certificate uh, of an LDAP server? So you can utilize this command, OpenSSL command, which shows the certificates, uh, certificate chain of an LDAP server, and from that you can capture the issuer certificate of the LDAP server and copy it into a temp file so i have named it as trusted underscore cas dot temp file so you can carry out this activity on your server to on your local server to extract the ldap server ca signer certificate now let us come let us take a look at the important section of uh, the open search configuration that is conferring the LDAP authentication section. Okay, so LDAP authentication and authorization configuration is carried out in the configuration file, which is present in Open Source Security folder, which is config.yaml file. So the base location may differ based on the type of installation that you are using. Uh, if you are if you have installed open search using the rpm based method uh, it might be present in etc slash open source security slash config dot yaml file but in my case uh, i'm using a docker uh, method so my 
config.yaml file is present in user share open search config location okay so if you open this file config.yaml file and scroll down a bit uh, into the ldap section you will see two important sections that is auth c and auth c okay auth c is basically for authentication auth c is used for authorization let us proceed okay so what happens uh, when a user uh, tries to authenticate himself with open search basic authentication page okay user enters his ldap id and password okay so before the authentication is happening for that ldap id the open search configuration tries to make a uh, establishment connection with the ldap server based on the bind dn and bind password that we have configured in the config.yaml file okay then the ldap id that we have provided uh, in the basic auth uh, page ldap id and ldap uh, password that ldap id is passed as an input to the 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 following uh, section which is user search okay so it is basically uh, user search is happening with that ldap id where zero is substituted with the ldap id okay so where exactly that ldap uh, query is happening or the ldap search is happening so as i said like i have my users in stack.com domain so that is a user base for my ldap tree so and my ldap search is going to happen in that particular uh, domain tree okay and it is going to query that ldap tree with a particular id that is username attribute that is common name okay let us proceed to our next slide so this is my uh, configuration file uh, with the auth c section which is authentication section the first part that you see is basically the ldap connection settings uh, which contains uh, whether the ldap is ssl uh, secured what is the pem uh, trusted ce certificate file uh, and what type of uh, tls uh, uh, communication that uh, we are using and uh, whether we are going to uh, like validate the client certificate okay but the most important part is uh, this section wherein we have the bind dn and the bind password and the user base wherein in which the user is going to be uh, searched for uh, with the user attribute cn okay so this is my whole configuration file like i'll be uh, sharing the link for my blog also in this uh, video description uh, which will be helpful for you to get this configuration details okay now let us come to the configuring the ldap authorization section okay so authorization section contains the same details as the uh, authentication section uh, as far as the ldap server connection details are concerned and the user uh, base and user search is concerned okay but the additional thing that uh, that are contained in the authorization section is the role based search uh, in which uh, like a user id is uh, searched for uh, whatever roles uh, that are assigned to him like those roles are searched in the role base to find if a particular role is matching and uh, if a particular role is matching uh, that role uh, cn name is going to be fetched so in my case uh, let's say like the role base is ou open search group so this is basically a tree in which we have a set of roles uh, with which the uh, in which the users are a part of mem uh, part of uh, that group okay if any particular role uh, which is also a, a, a user is a member of so that role is going to be identified and the cn name of that role is going to be fetched so this is how it is going to happen with the configuration that we are going to see in our next slide so this is my auth c auth z section that is authorization section so the first part that you see is basically the same as the ldap 
authentication section but the second part you will see is the authorization section uh, wherein you will have the role base and the role search and how we are going to get the role CN name from whatever role have been fetched for that particular user. Again this configuration file is going to be present in my blog from where you can refer so you need not worry about that one. Now that we have our LDAP configuration file ready along with the CA certificate file which we have fetched using the open search open SSL command it is time to configure our docker compose file with the LDAP CA uh, LDAP configuration file that is config.yaml file and the trusted underscore cas.pem file so these two files we can uh, basically volume mount into each container in a docker compose file okay so the, the docker compose file uh, like we can get it from the documentation of the open search page uh, which contains the sample document uh, docker compose file so we can take it as it is but like as i said like we have i have shared the blog in my description and you can refer to that blog to get the docker compose file now that we have our docker compose file ready it is time to start up the ldap uh, it is time to start up the open search cluster with ldap configuration okay we can use this docker compose up minus d which is detached mode to start up my, our open search cluster okay and give it some time so that it is up and running now, now that we have our uh, ldap integration done let us try to create some roles in open search cluster which will provide uh, a set of permissions to uh, that particular uh, uh, to a user who is a part of that role okay so this is a sample uh, role uh, generic user role uh, access file so it contains a set of cluster permissions set of index permissions and set of tenant permissions okay in our cluster permissions uh, like we wanted uh, we want to give uh, a user only the read only access so we i have assigned this group which is cluster underscore composite underscore ops underscore ro like you can refer to the documentation for a set of uh, permissions and rules that we can attach so this is the uh, group permission that i'm going to attach for cluster and in the index permissions like this is star wherein like we are going to apply this permission for all the indexes and the uh, permissions that we are going to assign for indexes allowed action read so all the indexes uh, will be provided with a read access okay and this is tenant permission for all the tenant patterns we are going to provide read access to the kibana portal so this is how a basic read only permission can be granted for a particular user who is a part of that role or who is assigned that role okay so we have created this file generic access.json file and in this step we are going to just post a rest api call uh, with that generic access.json file so that we can create that role in open search cluster okay so as you can see i am using this rest api call uh, which is underscore plugins underscore security api rules generic access that is the name of my role minus d at this is the json file that i have created in our last slide and this is the user credentials this is the default credentials for the open source cluster and here you can see the message that we are the generic access role has been created now that we have the generic access role created we need to map a set of uh, roles uh, to that user okay but in this case like we are going to map a backend role to the role that we have created okay so 
So let's say like we have a role created. We can map a user to that role. So basically that user uh, will be having that specific permission as per the role or we can map a backend role to that role that we have created. So what is a backend role? Backend role is a role that we have fetched from the external system. Okay. In this case, the backend role is the LDAP role that we have fetched. So for that role, we are going to, uh, the role that we have fetched from the LDAP server, we are going to map that to the, uh, the user role that we have created. Okay. So whenever a user authenticates with the LDAP server, we are authenticating them with the LDAP server. We are fetching that role, uh, or the user group from the LDAP tree. And that role is basically mapped to a backend role uh, using this uh, REST API call. And based on that backend role, uh, the user is provided access. Okay. So here uh, we are basically mapping three backend roles that is LDAP user group, which is our uh, LDAP group uh, from the tree. And these are some default. Uh, backend roles which are available in the cluster okay so these three roles are being assigned for the ldap uh, role that we are going to fetch from the backend now it's time to validate the LDAP user authentication and authorization. Authorization. So how we can do it? We can just launch our open search cluster and uh, uh, open the open search dashboard portal and try to authenticate with our LDAP ID. And you should be able to log in with your LDAP ID credentials. And as per the role uh, and role mapping that we have created for that user, uh, we should be able to only uh, get the read only access to the open search cluster. So this is all I wanted to show you in this video. Thank you all. Thanks for watching this video and you guys have a great day.